Good evening, brethren. I am very thankful, actually quite humbled that I was asked to speak tonight. I am, I was actually anticipating finding out who was going to speak, <laughs> and um, I, I am very thankful to the Lord for His um, for this year that He's given us. I, I've had a I've had a wonderful year in the Lord. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not exaggerating when I, I have estimated that it's my best year I've ever had in the Lord. And I, I'm very thankful to him. Um, tonight I want to go over Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Um, I thought this was, this was a good text to, to think about. It was good for me to think about it. I was thinking about this before I found out. I was going through this because this, to me, there were some things that needed to be forgotten, and um, and I was asking the Lord to give me grace to be able to forget them, and um, and He 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 gives grace to do this. He He He's going to do it. He's going to give you grace to forget the things that are behind. I'll read the text, brethren. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Spiritual life really boils down to one thing. Just really just one thing. Okay, well, When you really get it down, it, 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 you, you're, you're seeking to know Him and the power of His resurrection. See, it, it's through... Really, it, it's really simple when you really think about it. it, it you you want to you know him, the one that saved you, the one that took away your sins. See, he made it personal when he took away your sins. So see, you, you, as you see him more clearly, now Mary, Mary, she kind of, now she didn't probably wouldn't have said these exact words, but she kind of had a, a hint of this, didn't she? Luke 10, 41. Remember, Martha's running around the house, and she comes, Tell her to help me. <laughs> this is what Jesus said. Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. One thing. When the master is teaching in the house, there's really one thing needful. We want, we want to submit to Jesus. We want to, be, we want to be known for those who are submitting. Not like 10 years ago I submitted. Right now I'm submitting to the teaching of the Lord. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part. <laughs> what, don't you want people to, 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 to know you for one that has chosen that good part? Yes. It's chose that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. <laughs> so, you know, you have this desire to, to be pleasing unto the Lord and to see him more clearly and to press in. He's not going to take that away from you. See, you're gonna, that's gonna, that desire is going to be answered because the desire came from him. David had the right view of this truth as well. Psalms 27, 4 says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after that I might... That sounds like more than one thing, but it's not more than one thing. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. See, he's saying the same thing. I want to see Him more clearly. I want to know Him more perfectly. Even though it may seem on the surface to involve more than one thing, forgetting and reaching are done in the same energy that faith applies. It's a, or supplies. This energy that you see by faith, you know, obviously you can't see eternal things any other way. By faith, you were pressing towards by faith. We, we see, we know it's there by faith. But see that, the, the, that what that supplies, you have to take advantage of. See, what, what, what faith makes available, you have to press in to get. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, the writer of Hebrews says it like this. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, we have good reason now, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. See, we, we've got a good foundation there's a lot of people that went on before. What you're going through right now is not unique to you. Yeah. It's not. Someone else has, has already run this path. 
Jesus was the forerunner, right? He's gone before us, and now, see, we're pressing in. I want to follow him more perfectly in the next year. See, I want to get a hold of more than I did last year. I don't want to let anything slip through the cracks, as it were. Remember Jesus instructed the, the rich young ruler that came to him? This is what he told him. Mark 10, 21. Then Jesus beholded him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. One thing. Now, anybody in, in their right mind, if you, all you got to do is one more thing, just one thing. Now, he was seeking eternal life. That's what he said he wanted it. Yes. One thing. You're so close. You're very close. One thing. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And the man instantly went out and did it, right? No. And he was sad at the same. Sad. And went away grieved, for he had great possessions. I say he had great possessions. He doesn't have them anymore. He doesn't. He had to give them up. See, Jesus giving him an opportunity to give him up when it made some difference, when it would count for something. See, we've all got something to give up. The Lord's going to lead us into that area where we can see the sense in giving it up. Forget it, in other words. Don't get me wrong. I'm not implying that forgetting and reaching are the same action because they're not. But they're one thing, but they're not the same action. They are, in fact, two distinct acts that flow from a single desire. You're going, to get more, you're going to get more done than the normal person. People with faith can get more done. This one thing. This one thing I do. All right? The one thing have I desired. And Jesus says, one thing thou lackest. See, there's, there's, there, is, there are priorities in the faith. There are things that, that you have to seek more than other things. And now, God's going to give you wisdom if you're serious. If you're serious now, if you're pressing in, if you're giving, if, if you're already doing the things that he's given you to do, see, if you are, your hand's on the plow and you're pressing towards the mark, and you, well, see, he's going to give you wisdom to be able to know, wait a minute, this, this thing may, it may not even be a sin. Maybe this is just a weight. It's just a weight, but I didn't see it as a weight yesterday. But now today I see it as a weight, and so I'm going to cast it off. Brother, we've been honored in becoming a part of the One Thing Club. We really have. If you can see that, if you can see that the sense in, in um, the, 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 this one thing, well, see, now you've made a lot of ground already. Because some people, they say everything's the same. Well, everything's not the same. Faith enables those who possess it to multitask on the fly. You can... In one moment, you can cast down an imagination. You can just cast it right down, and then you can be pressing. You can be believing this, casting down this, making some headway, running the race. You can put on the whole armor of God and stand against the wiles of the devil and quench some fiery darts and pray always. You can do it all at one time. See, your faith is very versatile. It can do all these, faith, these things. Faith gives stability or balance to your life in Christ. See, as, you, as, you, as you're standing complete in him, see, this is not like an, something you do ignorantly. This is something you do intelligently. You, you're doing this purposefully. So now as the attack comes, it's not like going to take you unaware. Yeah. I expected something was going to come. I've been making some progress. I knew you'd show up, Amen. but I got a word for you. No. In other words, faith brings grace to do what God's commanded you to do. Amen. So see, as you can see it as you're intelligent, as you war intelligently, see, you, you become skilled in warfare. Amen. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Now, forgetting, as you already know, anybody who's ever been in the Lord for a while knows that forgetting is something that's very hard for the flesh to do. In fact, I would say that for the flesh, it's, it's nigh unto impossible. Somebody could do something to you, and you'll remember it 30 years later. Yeah. You'll still remember it. I remember when so-and-so did this. But how about the shoes on the other foot? How about you remember when you did something to somebody? But see, both of these are an enemy. They're an enemy. 
they got to be forgotten. If you've repented of it and Christ has forgiven you of it, forget it. Let it go. Don't carry it around. We, we have enough in the new year. We have enough to deal with and to battle. We don't need to be carrying things from last year in, into it. We don't. There are some things that have got to be let go. We've got to forget them. I'm not implying that you should forget everything. God forbid we should forget everything. I'm not going to forget everything, I'll tell you right now. I'm going to hold on to all those blessings, all those things that God did for me and showed me and opened up. All the ground you made, I'm not going to forget that. But anything that, that stood in my way, tried, that held me back, well, I'm not even going to give it a second thought. Well, forget it. Forgetting the things that are behind are... This is, this, is, this is part of the warfare. This is just part, part and parcel. Technically, we forget these every day, right? We don't let the sun go down on our wrath. Amen. Something happens to us, we quickly, just like Peter said, help me, Lord, quickly, we, we seek help, guidance to be able to do the right thing. We, we don't want to cause more trouble than, tr than is needful. I mean, there's, you know, it's, I'm not saying that you can forget somebody that hasn't asked for forgiveness. But you can be ready to forgive. See, that's all part of it. You can be ready. Right. Believe me, if you're not ready, if they do come and repent, you probably will have a hard time with it. You got to be ready. You got to mm -hmm. see. You got to see it the way Christ sees it. Amen. The eyes of faith are more beneficial when they're looking forward. See, faith is has, faith automatically has a forward stance to it. I'm looking forward Amen. to what. So forgetting those things which are behind, it's like, a, it's like a natural thing for faith to do. Faith's not really interested in too much back there anyway. Ephesians 4.31, I'm just kind of buttressing what I just said here. This is what the Lord said, or the apostle said from the Lord. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. Do it. Put it away. With all malice, and be kind one to another. Now, you know, if, if, if you're walking in the Spirit, you have this love for the brethren. This is like, this is sound. These are good words. This is a good sound to it, isn't it? Be, be kindly affectioned one to another. Love one another. Why? Well, why would we do that? Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, forgave you. So see... Technically, we don't have any right to hold a grudge against anybody because Christ, God didn't hold a grudge against us. He didn't. He, Christ took away the sin, and for, for Christ's sake, God forgave you. So now, see, you can look at it the same way, right? You, you can forgive them for Christ's sake. So tonight, as I was thinking about this, and like I said, I was first thinking about this with myself, and, and I thought, you know, if there's any kind of offense, I want to know about it. If, if, if I've done anything to anyone, and maybe not, they don't even know it. Maybe I just thought it. I, I, I don't want to take that into the next year. I, I, wa I wanted to seek the Lord to give me wisdom to be able to purge my conscience from dead works to where I can enter into this new year without anything, nothing, yeah. nothing, no kind of hindrances. I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to a year of, of, of now see, I say prosperity, I'm talking of spiritual prosperity. Yeah. Some people would probably, you know, I, I don't have anything against the other prosperity, as long as it's used <laughs> rightly, but, but I, I want to grow in the Lord. Amen. I want to grow in the grace and the knowledge Amen. of the Lord. I want to be, be able to speak better for him. To be able to, to be a better representative of his, of his grace and of his truth. The other things, I just want to forget them. You know, I think I was thinking of some failures, you know, and not failures like what a lot of people would think, well, I went out and did this. And that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking, I didn't measure up in my own estimation of what I could have. Well, I got to forget that. See, because that'll hold you back. If you just like all condemning yourself, let it go. Because yeah, you, you, now we're going to get to the pressing, the pressing part. That's the good part. Allow all the things that produced life in you last year to grow. 
Everything that you know that edified you, that built you up, put your hands to that plow. Let that grow in you. Let us lay aside the, the every weight. You know, uh, as I was thinking about this weight stuff, you know, I, I don't weigh a lot, but I weigh a lot more than I used to. But, but see, this is kind of, I, 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 I grew in Christ. I've grown that way. I was thinking about that. I weigh a lot more in Christ than I used to. I have more assets, see? The, the devil's a little bit more afraid of me t today than he was before, if I can say that. If you, you know what I'm saying. Technically, I know he's not afraid of me, but it's Christ in me. See, I think Christ has more of me today than he had a year ago. Amen. And I praise God for that. Amen. Lay aside every weight. Everything that's a hindrance. See, technically, the hindrance is first to you, but it's also a hindrance to your brethren. See, I, when I see my weight is bothering you, I want to get rid of it. I want to get rid of it because I, I don't want you to be hindered because of something I'm carrying around unnecessarily. There's no reason for those who are in Christ Jesus to carry around additional weight. There's none. We have no reason to do that. See, there's a sense in which we're very, very light-footed. Now, this picture that came into my mind is, as I was thinking about this reaching forward. Now, I remember saying, forget these things. Forget these things and reach forward to these things. And I was I got this mental picture of, you know, you, you hold on to two different things that are going in opposite directions. Eventually, you got to let go of one of them. You got to. In order to be jerked them apart, you know, that's. Amen. Well, which one are you going to let go of? See, he says, forget this one. Forget it. It's not prospering you anyway. Let it go. And reach forward. Now there's, there's, in other words, the Lord has some really good things. <laughs> He's going to show you. He, 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 faith looks forward to the things that are promised, right? Hope Amen. is born when you believe that God's going to do everything He promised. He's promised these things, and hope is like burning bright. And in that stance, well, forgetting, see, forgetting is not really as big a thing as what the flesh makes it to be. Because I'm looking forward to the new things. I'm looking forward to the better things. I was thinking we can let our assembly, we can be known as, as one of the, the, the parts of the body of Christ, as a church of the living God, we can be known for those who let go of lesser things and won't let go of the greater things. Let us openly and with one accord resolve to reach forward to those things which are before. There are very real things which are before. We're not just, it's not just like a, like a, we are sure, sure hoping that the next year, it's not a hope so. We know hope in, a, in this stance is a sure thing. We know that our light affliction, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, we know this. This is something we're guessing about. Which is but for the moment, it works for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory while we look on the things which are, w w w w not on the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Now, if you say that out loud in the group of people, they'll think you've gone mad. I'm looking, I'm not looking on the things that are seen. I'm looking on the things that aren't seen. Really. Really. I really am. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So see, if a person has a problem with that, then they don't know what faith is. They don't know that God's promised anything. Of course, if you never talk about the promises of God, if you never highlight the things that God's getting ready to do in Christ Jesus, then can you really expect people to have any hope? You know what happens when a person doesn't have hope? They sit down really doesn't make any difference what the circumstance is. It could be in the middle of a fire. If there's no hope, if there's no way out, then there's no reason to fight. See, so what we do for one another, we come together and iron sharpens iron. We, we fuel the flame of hope. I know before I, before I leave, every time I come here, I'm built up in the most holy. Fa I'm built up. Why? Because you, brethren, built me up. That's why. The light affliction it's only light in comparison to what we're, <laughs> what we're looking at. What we're looking at is far more exceeding weight of glory. Far more. So see, technically, you can carry more weight in the spirit, right? The flesh, we're casting off the weight. Oh, this weight. 
You get in the spirit and, oh, I can carry a lot more weight. This is an eternal weight of glory. This is eternal weight. I want to I be built up in the spirit. I want to be like a muscle man in the spirit. Let me carry more weight. Carry more weight with God and carry more weight with men. I press. See, in other words, I'm seeing things right. I'm seeing the things right. I'm walking in the spirit. I'm not putting any confidence in the flesh. I, I, I'm pressing towards the mark. See, someone that's pressing, you don't have to tell them, you better not do this. You, you, that, that, they don't even know. I'm pressing towards the mark. Yeah, I'm making progress with Christ. Pressing towards the mark. Because, see, there's this prize. <laughs> I got my eyes on the prize. And, 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 and you know, this, uh, this, this world, it really, I've already learned the lesson there, and we, I learned it over and over. That it doesn't have anything to compare with the prize. Uh, no, not, it doesn't have anything we're never going to make progress in the kingdom of God until we start pressing in. Amen. See, it, it, remember, he talks about this. It's a, it's, pressing is a violent act. How bad do you want the kingdom of God? Amen. How badly do you want the things that Christ has? I mean, the, there's a sense in which your name's already on it. Your names are written in heaven. But see, as you become more aware of that, as you become more more confident that your name's written in heaven, what will happen is you'll press towards the mark. Yeah. You'll cast away things that, well, you probably in the times past would have, would have argued that this is not a sin. This is not a sin. I can't find it anywhere in the Bible that this is a sin. Yeah, but see, once you start realizing your name's written in heaven and you're pressing towards the mark and you're filled with hope and you're anticipating him to show up at any moment, this thing over here, it doesn't, it's not even an issue. It's going to pass away yeah. anyway. Pressing, it's a violent act. Yeah, I like to do violence in the kingdom. You know, I, I especially like to do violence against my own flesh. Uh, I'm, I, I have to admit that I, I hate my old man. I, I, I loathe my old man. He's done me much evil, but you know what? I, I have a word for him. You don't get in. You don't get to come. You have to stay here. You're going to die. See, that wasn't something that I had overnight. This is something that that I have this hearty appreciation for the death of my flesh. Now, some people may think it's morbid, but that's because they don't know. They're, oh, everyone's going to have to die. It's a point when the man wants to die. Yeah. But see, to not allow it to have its way until you do die, this is, see, this is, this we need grace to do. But God's right there. He's, he's, God's ready to give you grace to crucify your flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know this is warfare talk. But I can talk to the saints about this kind of warfare. We, 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 we're doing battle against. See, when you see the flesh for what it really is, your flesh would kill you if it had a chance. It, so you think, well, I, I need to be nice to my No, you don't need to be nice. You need to crucify your flesh. Crucify the flesh with the affections and lusts. Because, see, if they have their way, they'll keep you out of heaven. Now, when you start seeing that this is a life and death situation... Now, now I'm ready to do some violence. I'm ready to, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take the kingdom by violence. That is if I'm going to have it. Because the flesh is going to sit back and say, well, that's okay. All right, if that's what you want to do. No, no, no. The flesh is going to, it's going it's to fight against you every opportunity it has. It's going to do, it's going to say things like, you don't really have to go every Sunday. You don't really have to do that, do you? Of course, I've learned this new word. It's called shut up. And, and I'm using it, and it, it's working. Just shut up. Because, see, it, it, the flesh doesn't really know anything anyway. It doesn't know anything eternal. The only thing that my flesh is interested in is right now, right now, right now. So wait, just shut up because I'm looking over here. And over here, I'm telling you, this is some blessings. There's some blessings here for eternal blessings now. There's pleasures. I found that at his right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. Amen. So you just shut up. Amen. You don't get to talk. Amen. I'm going to tell you when you can talk, and I say never. Amen. John talked about those who overcame, right? 
over, there were some people who overcame. What did they overcome? Well, let's think about it here. Revelation 12, 10. And I heard a voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and strength. Amen. We got strength, brethren. Yep. He's given us strength. Amen. Why? Because we got we to overcome. No one's going to overcome that doesn't have strength. You got to have some strength. And that's just come to us. It's come right now. It's come. Your strength has come. Right? And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's cast down. He don't like it, but you can remind everyone. So I read, you've been cast down. I got strength. You've been cast down. They which accused them before the, our God day and night, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Just something that you didn't have anything to do with. The blood of the Lamb, right? The word of their testimony. You're doing some talking. And they love not their lives unto the death. So I'm not so weird after all, am I? I'm reading here about people who didn't love their life unto the death. They were willing to give up their life in order to have life with Christ. Now, where'd they get that? They got strength from him. That's where he made them strong to where they could see it was worth giving up this life to have life with him. Well, now, that's power. That's what that is. They had power to overcome. Now, until this is seen, until, this, until that picture is really seen as a life and death situation, you're just going to, you can't do it. But see, this is... They overcame. Now, whenever I see a video of like a, a violent or, or, or some kind of situation that involves like a calamity, something that's going on, it's like a bomb scare or something, or a bomb goes off somewhere, you just pay close attention to the people and what they're doing. They're not like sitting around going, should we have a cup of coffee? <laughs> this is not what they're doing, Okay. This is a life and death situation. And people will trample over one another to get to safety. They'll do whatever it takes. Well, this is a life and death situation we're in now. Are you going to forget the things that are behind and press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God? Are you going to do that? Because if you don't, you don't get it. It's a life and death situation. Now, it's evident by the, the footage that I've seen anyway, that you wouldn't have to coax any of those people to say, come on, don't you think you should come over here and get out of the bomb so you can be safe? And they're like, well, I don't know. I really like it here. <laughs> this is, this, I know it sounds foolish, but this is where people have, have they don't know they're in a danger zone. They don't know they're going to die if they don't press towards the mark for the high calling. They don't know. So see, this is where preachers need to stand up. They need to make people aware. Amen. You're going to die in your sins if you don't repent. you got to do this. Right. Well, people will do anything to get to safety in a, in a time of emergency. They'll do it. See, it's because they have some kind of hope of getting out of that situation. If they can look across the, the thing and see a door. Let's make it to that door. The place is on fire. Over here, there's a door over here. And everyone starts following the voice. There's, a, there's safety. There's a way out. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's what sound doctrine and sound preaching does for people. Yeah, right. It shows them there's a door. There's a way out. Yeah. All you got to do is come over here. You believe the record that God's given of his son. Do it. You'll, they'll be safe. Solomon said, well, there's no vision. The people perish. They die, and we're living in a time when there's no vision. There's no vision. See, the devil knows. He knows if, if, they'll, if they can see it, they'll want it. And so he's kind of jumbled it all up. What about you, brother? I press towards the mark. See, I know. I know you. I, I've, 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 I've known you for a while. I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now, you, you're pressing towards the mark. I've witnessed it. I, I can testify that my brethren are pressing towards the mark. Why? Because I benefited from their pressing. That's why. I've been blessed by your pressing towards the mark. See, 
We're saved by hope. We are. We're saved. I can tell you that your hope has helped to save me. I've seen you hoping for eternal life. And in your hoping, you've helped me grow. We're saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. But what a man seeth, why does he get hope for? We don't have what we're pressing in to get entirely. We have the first fruits. So see, it behooves us, all those who are in Christ Jesus, to keep pressing towards the mark. Amen. See, as you press harder, you find out that you have more power to press yeah. than you knew you had before you pressed. Pressing in. Technically, we're in the process of being saved. Uh, we're saved a little bit. <laughs> we're saved, but we're going to be saved. Believe me, when he shows up, we're going to, woo, we're saved now. We thought we were saved before, but oh, we're saved now. We're in the process. There are some very real things that we want to forget about last year. There's some very real things, and each one of us, as we examine ourselves, will find there's things. Let them go. Just have, there's grace to do it, just let them go. And in that, you'll find more power to press into the new things, the better things, the things that are um, the good things. Hebrews 6.10 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shown towards his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. You see that ongoing process? That on You have ministered. You have grown. You've been pressing. But you just keep doing it. You just keep pressing towards the mark. Don't let anything that's temporal ever stand in your way of pressing in. Amen. It'll try to do it. Yeah. You just set your mind that I'm not going to do that. We don't want to forget that God doesn't forget. <laughs> See, that's something well, I'm not going to forget that. I'm taking that with me right into the next year. God does. He's not going to forget. You've been doing some good things for him. He won't forget that. Men may forget it, but he won't forget it. The apostle reveals his desire for the people of God, and this is our desire for one another. See, Paul was an excellent example of someone who had a care for the church, right? He was known for his care for the church. Now, as you can identify with what he says, this is your token that you have the same care for the church. And now we know, we know when you look at Paul and you see that he had a care for the church, what kind what does that tell you about Paul? What does that reveal to your heart? This, he was a tender brother. He had, Christ had worked in him at one time. He was chasing him down, right? Yeah, well, he wasn't chasing him anymore. Amen. What happened? He, he, Christ changed him. and his, He had this care for the church. And I know if we'll just stop and consider all the things that God's done for us in the last year. We'll forget the things that are behind, and we'll press towards the mark, because I guarantee you he's done a lot of things. And thank you, brother.